Hello friends. So today we are going to start with a new concept all together in this NCERT series. In this concept, we are going to have the entire NCERT pure in English. So this is going to be an entire English session of NCERT. We are going to read through the in between the lines of NCERT, what exactly NCERT tries to say and what is being explained. So we are going to see what NCERT has to offer to us. Many of the students have said that they have a difficulty in reading through the NCRT, understanding the NCRT because NCRT seems to be jumping from one concept to another. So what I thought was that let's make an NCRT series of pure English for the students who have a difficulty in understanding Hindi and many of our sessions are to be conducted in Hindi and English both. So they have a slight difficulty. So let's have the concepts of NCRT. Let's read between the lines with me. That is an oops, sir. And let's begin with the some basic concepts of chemistry. So let me introduce myself a little. My name Anup Pashist. I'm an MSc in chemistry from University of Delhi and I have taught lakhs of students and I have got the best of the ranks from the students. So I want you to be in the league of these best of the best students. That is these students who have got the best of the best ranks. So are you with me to be there? Let's begin and to connect with us, you can get along with the telegram channel that is live www.livedaily.me slash chat. Here, if you link with us, you are going to get an option to join with us in uh, Unacademy Meet. And there are so many other channels which you can attach with. There is going to be a channel of J, there is a channel of the Voyage and so on. You can join with all the channels right here. You are going to get a page to join with those channels. And if you miss any of the topics, if you miss any of the classes, you can get along with www.livedaily.me slash neat. And here, all the links along with the PDF notes of all the lectures are available. You can use them without wasting any time. So get along with us. And here, we start with the NCRT in between the lines with me. That is Anup sir. So to begin with it, let's see. We are going to talk about what exactly our target in this unit is. What will we be able to do after studying this unit? After studying this unit, you will be able to appreciate the contribution of India in development of chemistry and understand the role of chemistry in the different spheres of life. We are using chemistry in everyday life. So what exactly chemistry helps us with, we will be able to understand. We will be able to explain the characteristics of three states of matter that is solid, liquid and gas. Of course, we know that there are five states of matter, but three states of matter are the ones which affect us. Then also we will be able to classify the different substance into elements, compounds and mixtures. In this unit, we are going to deal with that and we are going to use the scientific notation and determine the significant digits. We will understand what is the meaning of significant digits and what is the meaning of scientific notation. We will also know the difference between precision and accuracy. So to get further, we are also going to define the SI base units. We are going to convert the physical quantities from one system of units to another like we are going to convert it from SI units to the CGS unit to the MKS unit and the some standard units which we are using in everyday life. We are going to also explain the various laws of chemical combination given by the various scientists. These are the laws which were based on observation. And further, we are going to appreciate the significance of atomic mass, average atomic mass, molecular mass and formula mass. Also, we are going to describe the terms that is mole and molar mass. We will need to different, differentiate between moles. What are the moles and what is the meaning of molar mass? Further, we are also going to calculate the mass percent of component elements we are going to know what is the constituents of the compound and how we can get the formula of the compound from the mass percent and how we can get the mass percent from the formula. And also we are going to talk about molecular formula and the empirical formula and determine them from experimental data. And finally, we are also going to perform various stoichiometric calculations. So this is the basis of this chapter. That is what we are going to do in these chapters. Now, what exactly is the meaning of chemistry? Now, what we say is chemistry is not just the science of molecule, the, just the science of a few elements or maybe hundreds of elements. It is actually the science of how these elements join with each other and behave with each other. So it deals with the transformations of these elements, how these elements transform, how they combine, how they are able to create 
different compounds. Millions of compounds which are being formed by the composition combination of these hundred odd elements. So that is what we get in chemistry. Now, as far as we talk about the chemistry, as we understand today, this chemistry is not a very old science. It has been certain recent discovery. We may say that Anthony Lavoisier was the father of chemistry. Now, chemistry had not been studied for the chemistry's sake. It was basically the result of the search for the two important things a person wants, a human being wants. One, to live forever. And second, to have the entire wealth of the world. For that, they made two mythic substances. One was called philosopher's stone, the sorcerer's stone, the philosopher's stone or parasparthar, which would convert any metal like iron, like copper into gold. So they were searching for that mythic substance, the philosopher's stone, which could make them the wealthiest person in the world. And then second, the elixir of life. The elixir of life would make them live forever. So everybody wanted to live the life forever and they wanted to have the entire world. So pursuing these two goals, these they did many of the experiments, they did many of the procedures. The only important thing was that whoever was doing these procedures was very much systematic. They were very much uh, persistent in noting down everything that they were doing. So that this led to the development of science. In India, the people were already having the knowledge of many of the scientific phenomena much, much before the advent of modern science. We did forget that for a certain brief period. Brief was a few hundred years. We forgot that at that time, but later on, we really came back to the important things. So here, we are going to talk about what was the development of chemistry and what contribution of India was there. So this was what something called philosopher's stone. Here, of course, I have taken the picture from a very famous, you know, where. So that was a kind of the thinking about the philosopher's stone, a big ruby. Now, iron, copper and gold have been the part of our life from the since time. I don't know how long people have even forgotten to date it from when. We have started using iron, copper and gold. So here, now that what lead to in knowledge with us. They had the knowledge of chemical processes and techniques. In ancient India, chemistry was called Rasayan Shastra. I prefer to say that it is Rasayan, but it does not have any Ras in it. It doesn't have any life in it. What we have is we remove all the Ras from it and we leave the ions. So that's what we have as Rasayan Shastra. It was also called Ras Tantra or Ras Kriya or Ras Vidya. Ras, Ras referring to any kind of chemical, any kind of fluid, any kind of solid, any kind of extract. That was Ras or simply speaking, Ras means chemical. So it included metallurgy. They developed metallurgy. They developed medicine. They developed manufacture of cosmetics. They talked about glass. They talked about dyes, the coloring materials. They system the when when the people when the discoverers when the explorers when the archaeologists they talked about systematic discoveries the systematic excavations as Mohenjo Daro in Sindh and Harappa in Punjab they prove that there was a huge development of chemistry at that time chemistry the tirest of India with chemistry is long dated so here the archaeological finding they also show that they had baked bricks they had made the bricks which were baked, they had strength and they used that for construction work. They had the mass production of pottery and that was very much regarded as the earliest use of chemistry, chemical processes, because these potteries were not just potteries, they were glazed, they were heated, they were strengthened, in which materials were mixed, molded and subjected to heat by using fire to achieve desirable qualities. Now remains of these glazed potteries they which have been found in Mohenjo Daro, gypsum cement has been used in the construction work. So these uh, bricks etc were joined together using gypsum, the cement that we are using in modern buildings. So they were being used at that time also near about 5000 years ago. Clear. So that's what we have as the various elements. That's what we were doing. And here 
they melted and forged a variety of objects from metals. They made lead, they made silver, gold and copper. They improved the hardness of copper for making artifacts by using tin and arsenic. So actually they made alloys. And a number of glass objects were found in Muski in South India. They were made able to make glass. In Hastinapur, Takshila, North India, glass and glazes were colored. They added some metals, they added metal salts to it and they made them colored. Copper metallurgy in India, that was something like the beginning of Chalcolithic age. That the time when, when copper was being used, the very first time the copper used was introduced to human beings. Indians have been using it. So Chalcolithic cultures, the, since the very beginning, they have been in India. There are much archaeological evidences to support the view that technologies for extraction of copper and iron, they were developed in India, indigenously, right in India. So according to Rig Ved, the tanning of lather, the coloring of lather, oh, lathering, leather, the tanning and coloring of leather and dyeing of got cotton were practiced during 1000 to 400 BCE, something around 2000, 3000 years ago. So we have been using this tanning of leather and the dyeing of cotton for around 3000 years. This is what we have as the jewelry which has been excavated and the golden gloss of the black polished ware of northern India. It has not yet been replicated and it is still a chemical mystery. That is a mystery to everybody how they were able to achieve that kind of glazing which we have not yet been able to duplicate. So, and Kautilya, Chanakya, his earth shastra describes the production of salt from sea, how the salt was obtained from sea, the edible salt was obtained from sea. Rasopnishda describes the preparation of gunpowder mixture for fireworks and many other things using sulfur, charcoal, saltpeter, that is potassium nitrate, mercury, camphor. Nagarjuna was a great Indian scientist. He talked about a lot of things. He talked about this is what we have as the glazed pottery, the black glazed pottery, which has a golden black glaze. This has not yet been replicated. We could not get it. So here, Nagarjuna was a reputed chemist. He was an alchemist and he was a metallurgist. His work, Ras Ratnakar, Ras Ratnakar, deals with the formulation of mercury compounds. He has also discussed the methods for extraction of metals. He discussed the extraction of gold, silver, tin and copper. And then there was a book. Rasan Ras Ar Navam. It appeared, he, it appeared around 800 CE. So that was Indians. That was India, the chemistry of India. Chakrapani also discovered a mercury sulfide. He discovered mercury sulfide and he also invented soap. He used mustard oil and some alkalis like ingredients for making the soap. The Indians began making soap in 18th century. They made soaps right in 18th century. And uh, oil of aranda and seeds of mahua, the oils, they were used to make soap. And he, they used calcium carbonate along with it. Rather than sodium, they were barely developed on, dependent on calcium carbonate. So, this is what was used for making soap. The paintings which were found in Ajanta and Elora, they are fresh till date. Their colors have not faded and that itself tells volumes about the capacity to make colors and dyes and the chemistry behind it. These are which fresh after ages. This testifies to the high level of science achieved in ancient India. And Vraha Mihir's Brihat Samhita, it was something like encyclopedia. Encyclopedia, it was composed in the 6th century. It informs about the preparation of glutinous, something like gelatinous substance, material to be applied on walls and roofs of the houses and temples to make them waterproof, to make them last longer, to keep their shine better. So they were using all these chemistry and there are so many classical tales, Athar Ved, it was made in something like 1000 BCE, that is something like 3000 years before from now. It mentions some dye stuffs, the coloring materials which were used like turmeric, madder, sunflower, orpiment, 
cochineal and lac lac we have already done a session on it named lakshagre go ahead and see that session called lakshagre which was used so this lac was used to color the substances it was used as a dye it has a water soluble dye in it some other substances having tinting properties coloring properties like complexia patanga jatuka these are the local terms for those coloring materials perhaps you would be able to get hold of it so that's what we have the development now this concept that matter is ultimately made up of indivisible building blocks appeared in india few centuries as a part, part of philosophical speculations so acharya kanda he was born in 6000 bce he was known as the name of kashyap he was the first proponent of atomic theory so atomic theory is nothing new for indians it is quite old in fact even before something like 2500 years before john dalton gave the name so they formulated the theory of very small indivisible particle which he named as parmanu he gave the concept of anu and parmanu anu is something akin to molecules and parmanu is something akin to the atoms so that was earlier itself atharved he explained this individual entity cannot be sensed through any human organ so he was saying actually he was saying that it's so small that is beyond the senses of human beings and he added that there are variety of atoms that are as different as the different classes of substances so he talked about the difference in the characteristic of atoms he said that these parmanus could be forming pairs triplets among other combination and unseen forces now he was not able to pinpoint what forces are going to hold them together but he suggested that there were some unseen forces which were not known at that time they were causing interaction between them he conceptualized his theory around 2500 years before john dalton so here is kanda here is john dalton kanda was 2500 years senior to john dalton charak samhita is the oldest ayurvedic epic of india we have moved away from ayurveda we moved away now we are returning back to our roots it describes the treatment of diseases please remember ayurveda is a medicine science it is not something like uh, addition to allo allopathy or western medicine it is an alternate medicine so it is to be treated as medicine not something chalo ye bhi kar le not something like that it is to be like treated with proper respect so it is to be discussed in charak samhita extreme reduction of particle size is termed as nanotechnology and they were practicing nanotechnology because charak samhita describes the use of bhasma bhasma was a procedure bhasma was a system powdered very fine particulate matter which was specifically made certain metal bhasma were made for the treatment of certain illness once there was a decline of alchemy latro chemistry reached a steady state latro chemistry is medicinal chemistry that reached a steady state it wasn't being developed it wasn't being reduced it just they were practicing those things which they knew at that time there were not any developments here and it too literally slowly started declining it the the process the science is something like either it moves up or it moves down it remains it doesn't remain steady for a long period and then it declined due to the introduction and practice of the western medicinal system in the 20th century now in this period of stagnation pharmaceutical industry based on ayurveda they continued to exist but declined the knowledges which were being passed from person to person they were stopped in between the people stopped having faith on ayurveda they had faith on western medicines and so it declined now here we talked about something like modern chemistry now when we talk about this uh, there was something like indians took 100 to 150 years to learn and adapt to new technology in fact they had to adapt to new technology because they actually left whatever they already knew 
If you just denounce what you know and you try to learn absolutely new thing, it is going to take time. So 100 and 150 years was again relearning of what we knew. We already had the knowledge and then we thought we didn't. And so we started learning everything afresh and obviously that is going to take time. Now these time foreign products poured in because the, the indigenous industries were destroyed. New industries were set up. An alternate path was shown to us, although it was the same path, but different switch. Indigenous traditional techniques gradually declined. Modern science appeared in Indian scene, but I don't think so. That's something modern about it. It was a different approach to the same thing. But they said that this was a different approach. Appeared in the Indian scene in the later part of 19th century. By mid 19th century, European scientists started coming to India and the modern chemistry started growing. So that was the development of modern chemistry. Now these aspects can be simply described and understood in terms of basic constituents of matter that are atoms and molecules. So atoms and molecules were considered the basic units and using these basic units, this aspect was developed. So we talk about atoms and molecules. So from here, we are going to begin over with what exactly is the modern chemistry. This was an introduction. This was the introduction of contribution of India towards the modern chemistry, the old chemistry and what had been done in India. So we need to be proud of being what we are. Here we have the special class schedule. Pradeep sir is going to take biology at 10 a.m. Gaurav sir is going to take physics again at 10 a.m. So you have to make a choice. Mahendra sir is taking physics at 11 a.m. I'm taking chemistry at 12 p.m. And here I'm discussing the various questions. I'm discussing the questions of NCRT. I'm discussing the questions of NTA Abhyas. Seep ma'am takes the biology at 1 p.m. Deepak sir chemistry at 5 p.m. And Anu sir physics at 6 p.m. And we have the YouTube live, live daily schedule. In YouTube live daily schedule, we have starting from 11 a.m. and going up till right till 10 p.m. So that's what we have scheduled. 11 a.m. is Pritika ma'am. Deepak sir is at 12 p.m. Mahendra sir is taking at 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. alongside Anu sir. Seep ma'am takes 5 p.m. class. Anup sir, that is me. I take 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. 6 p.m. we have regular course study of 11th and 12th. From Monday to Wednesday, we have 11 class schedule and from Thursday to Saturday, we have 12 class schedule. At 9 p.m., we are doing the questions from NTA Abhyas of the various chapters that we are doing at that time. So just attend both the classes at 6 p.m. as well as 9 p.m. The Pradeep sir talks about the botany at 7 p.m. Gaurav sir does physics at 8 p.m. And again, 9 p.m., I am with you. You can join with us at telegram channel www.livedaily.me slash chat and you can join with us if you miss any of the classes at www.livedaily.me slash neat. So here you are going to get all the notes, you are going to get all the sessions arranged for you for your perusal. You can just go on with all these channels, all these lectures anytime you wish without wasting time. And for the Unacademy subscription, remember Unacademy subscription, the prices are going to rise. Unacademy subscription is the thing which you need for a sure success. You get live classes here, you can interact with educator, you have live polls and leaderboard and you can have test series and analysis. And the most important thing which I feel is the most important that is live doubt clearing sessions. You are going to clear all your doubts right there right at that time so that it doesn't linger and doesn't impede your growth. So get with the acquaintance with the best of the educators. I have an experience of 23 years. This is the entire team. You have so many teams to choose from and one suggestion. One of our winners of Battle of Brains suggested that the students are not sticking to one team. It is all up to you which team you like. But once you choose a team, stick to it throughout. Choose the educator and stick. Do not keep on changing every month. If you keep on changing every month, you will be you will end up starting with the same chapter again and again and again. And having a mastery of one chapter will assure that you get answer to one question. You need 
too many questions. So you need to complete the course, stick to one teacher, stick to one team and that team is going to get you through your entire session. So join with us and remember there is a price hike which is going to be effective on 24th October and you can beat that price hike by taking the subscription right now, use the code AVLIVE and get the discount on the discounted price. The price hike is substantial. This one month subscription, which is supposed to be 6,000 at the time, it's going to become 7,000. The three month subscription, which is something around 15,000 at this time, is going to become 17,500. And six month subscription, which is supposed to be 24,000 at this time, it is going to become 28,000. And the maximum increase is going to be in the one year and two year subscription. The one year subscription, which at this moment is 30,000, is going to become 38,500. And the two year subscription, which at this moment is 36,000, is going to become 56,000. So you are going to be at a pinch in this two year subscription. So, my sincere suggestion go ahead and take a two year subscription. Even if you are 2023. Even if you are just about to give the 10th examination, then still you can go in for the two year subscription. Using the code AV Live, you are going to get 10% discount. This is going to become 5,400. This is going to become 13,500. This is going to become 21,600. This is going to become 27,000. And this is going to become 32,400. So just go ahead and take the subscription, even the New pricing of iconic subscription is substantial increase. This one year subscription at this moment, it is 45,000. Use the code AV Live and you are going to get it for 40,500. The two year subscription, there you are going to feel the pinch. At this moment, it is 61,000. Using the code AV Live, it's going to become 50, 54,900. And it's going to become 90,000. What do you need to do? Go to the learning app, install it, and then go with the Neat UG, click on plus, click on get subscription. You can use any of these. At this moment, Neat UG makes the maximum sense because here the prices are going to increase. Go ahead, 12 month, 24 month. 12 month is specifically for 2021, 24 month is for specifically for 2022, even 2023, they should be going for 24 month subscription. Use the code AV Live, get the 10% discount on the discounted price. So this is the, or you can even go in for iconic subscription for 12 months and 24 months. Here also the code AV Live works and you are going to get 24 month subscription for 54,900 while 12 month subscription is 40,500. Again, go ahead for two year subscription. That would be the best for you. In this, you are going to get neat UG workshops, expert guidance, study planner, test analysis, that is what you are going to get in the iconic subscription. You would be having a mentor who is going to guide you throughout all your processes. You are, he is going to hold your hand and take you to your target. So subscribe the channel, like and share this video with all of you. This is an introduction video of NCRT chapter which we are going to start from the next class onwards. So press the bell icon, download the PDF notes and Subscribe to the channel, Neat Live Daily. We have certain sister channels as well, sister brother channels. These are the so many channels which are going to have so many people with you. We have Neat Telugu also, we have Just Neat, we have Neat Voyage and we have Neat Toppers. The fastest growing channels, be the part of it. And use the code AVLIVE to join with us. All the best. From the next class onwards, we are going to start with the chapter. So till then, bye-bye and take care. Bye.